In this video, we're going to cover CDI emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Alright everybody, the CDI is a huge curiosity to me. It's a system that I've never owned physically, yet I own a couple of Nintendo Zelda releases for the system as well as Hotel Mario, yet have never played them because, again, I don't own the system, and setting up the system for emulation in MAME was never something I was that interested in. But with the release of RetroArch 1.10.1, there has been a new CDI standalone core released that is forked from MAME, making it a lot easier to get CDI emulation up and running. So since this core is so new, I don't really know a whole lot about it, but we're going to cover just basic getting it set up and running today. So let's dive in. So the first step to getting CDI emulation up and running on your Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch is to install the Xbox Series X or S version of RetroArch. It doesn't matter if it's in dev mode, retail mode, doesn't matter. But you might also be interested in moving a lot of your important folders over to USB for easier update to the latest builds. But link to this playlist will be in the description below. Get RetroArch installed, get it set up, and then continue along with this guide. Now, the next thing you are going to need to do is source a number of CDI BIOS files. Google will be your friend here. I will not provide illegal download links on my channel. If you don't know how to Google, go back to 2004. But the BIOS file that you're looking for is CDI mono onezip And inside that zip file will be all of these BIOS files. Now, you need to leave it as a zip folder. And then optionally, you can get CDI BIOS.zip and CDI mono 2 Dot zip. But once you have all of these sourced, we need to just build a BIOS folder for same CDI. So that's create a folder named same CDI with a folder inside of it named BIOS in which you place these folders. So demonstration, got all three of those BIOS files, new folder, same underscore CDI. And inside of it, BIOS. And then I will just drop these three BIOS files right on in. And done. Now we just need to add this same CDI folder to our RetroArch system folder. So if you moved your important folders like the system folder to USB, just plug your USB drive into your computing device of choice, open your system folder, and drag the same CDI folder right on in. If you still have your system folder in the Q drive, open up Durango FTP, and start your file share. Now back over on your preferred device, Open up your Xbox's FTP file share using your preferred method. Navigate into the local folder, find your RetroArch folder, local state folder, system folder, and drag it right on in. Next, you're going to need to source CDI games. Now, the same CDI core only supports ISO and CHUD format games. So, I backed up my CDI games using the PC version of RetroArch, but that put them in binq format which unfortunately didn't work for this core, so I had to convert them over to chud. And to do this, I just used our old friend, the q slash gdi to chud.bat file with chudman. So there will be a download link to this in the description below if you need to convert binq format games over to chud. If they're in ISO format, you're already good to go. Now, I've read online that there are a number of issues with pirated CDI bin files and Q files not being made correctly, so if you get an error, that is likely the reason. But once you have your game sourced, you have them converted into ISO or CHUD, we just need to add them to our preferred storage medium. So I'm going to take my CDI games folder and add it to my USB drive. Or if you're relying on an S drive install, you can access your Xbox's FTP server again, head into S, Program Files, Windows Apps, Find your RetroArch folder with the x64 at the end, find your made games folder, and drag them right in. But now we're ready to move over to the Xbox. Alright, so back over on the Xbox, I got my USB drive put back in place and got booted up into RetroArch. And from here, I'm ready to begin loading up CDI content. So what I like to do is make a games playlist, and to do this, head to import content, and we're going to do a manual scan since these games are going to be in CHUD format. But content directory, navigate to where you have your game stored. So USB under dev mode will be in E, USB under retail mode will be in D, or if you put them on the internal SSD, follow that S drive path. So for my example, E, games, CDI games, and I'm going to tell it to scan this directory. 
Now for system name, choose custom because there is no Philips CDI entry in this current version yet, unfortunately. Got the uh, wonderful uh, Philips Video Pack Plus, but yeah. Anyway, so custom, custom system name, and then you can just type out Philips CDI. And then press start when you have it set. Now for default core, press right on the D-pad to head down to the P's here. And we're looking for Philips, CDI, same CDI. Then make sure scan recursively is on if you have your game separated into subdirectories and once it's set, go ahead and start the scan. And now you'll have a new CDI playlist here on the left with all of your games inside of it. And then we can just choose a game and tell it to run. And as long as everything is placed correctly, you should get a nice colorful boot screen that eventually takes us to the Philips CDI main menu. And then you can press A on Play CDI. And that should load up your CDI games. But there we go, Hotel Mario for Philips CDI playing on the Xbox Series X and S. And there we go, we are now playing Hotel Mario. And this is the first time I've ever gotten to play this game. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's Mario, so I mean, I assume you stomp on Goombas. Maybe pick up some coins. But unfortunately, that's about as far as my knowledge base for the Philips CDI currently goes. If you head into the RetroArt Quick menu, you can scroll down to the Controls tab, and you can see what your buttons are mapped to. They're pretty much in Super Nintendo format. And then heading into the Core Options, there's a ton of stuff here since it is still based on MAME, so I'm not quite sure what is really required for this core and what isn't yet. I'm hoping that as this core progresses, this gets a little more clear because right now, it's, again, I have no idea what is needed and what isn't. And even things like setting the resolution really hasn't seemed to matter for CDI games. I have it set to 4K right now, but it didn't look any different than the native 640x480 to me. So experiment with that, I guess, on your own uh, games and see what you think. And that's about all I'm willing to cover as far as the core options currently. But one last thing that we can cover is, of course, shaders. If you head into the shaders tab, you can turn them on and load up some shader presets. So let's slap a CRT filter on uh, the CDI games here because, <laughs> sure, why not? And then when we go back into the game, we got a wonderful little CRT shader ready to go. And, hey, it's looking pretty sweet, I have to say. But shaders are always going to be a personal preference option, so go through them, see which ones you like. And then when you find the one you like, head back into the shader tab and hit save, and you can save them as a core preset. So that way, every time you load up a CDI game, that's the option that's going to greet you. But that's going to do it for my quick Philips CDI setup guide for Xbox Series X and S today. Again, I'm not too familiar with this core yet, so there's not much that I can really comment on as far as core options. This is more of a helping you get it running type of a deal this time around. But thank you as always for watching today's video, appreciate you spending even a minute of time on this channel, and really helping us push it. But I have a couple more big favors to ask here at the end of the video. If you haven't done so already, hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And also hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. I have loads of stuff in the pipeline and I'd love to have you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions, y'all are amazing, thank you for keeping us going and believing in what we do. But until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.